The Democratic Republic of Congo is in Central Africa. It is a beautiful country and very rich in resources. Gold, silver, amethysts and other precious minerals, one of which, Colton, is found in every phone and 80% comes from Congo. Unfortunately, this has made it a target for greedy companies and nations and added to that is tribal warfare. A war started in Congo in 1998, essentially between the Hutu and Tutsi tribes. You may have seen it at the time on your television. And two and a quarter million people so far have been killed as a result of that war. The war was known as the Bloody Colton War and it was extremely brutal and evil, particularly towards women who have been raped and mutilated. Rape is higher in Congo than any other country. The government is corrupt and no money is being put into the infrastructure of the country. The roads are in a desperate state. People are in dire poverty through lack of work or pay and corruption is through every strata of their society. Evil has entered the hearts of the men and it has become a scary place to live. My parents worked in Congo in the 1950s as missionaries and I was born there in 1954. I left when there was trouble in 1960 and had never been back until 2010 when with a friend I travelled through the eastern part of Congo. When I travel to Congo <clears throat> it's against foreign office advice because it is so dangerous. What I found broke my heart and I felt God speak to me and tell me to do something about it. But what could an ordinary woman like me do? During that first visit, I stayed in the city of Bukavu. Bukavu is a city in the northeast of the country and borders with Rwanda. It is one of the most dangerous parts of the country because of its conflict with Uganda and Rwanda. In that city is the Bukavu Bible College, which was ransacked during the war and left with nothing except a few broken down buildings, a rusty leaking roof, and a few tatty old desks and chairs. I was asked to preach at the graduation of the students of that college and my host for that visit was a man called Boniface Melander. Boniface is a godly man, a man of integrity and the principal of the Bukavu Bible College and pastor of the church that meets in the same building. He has worked for many years with very little resource or encouragement, trying to teach men a different way, trying to show men how to find Jesus Christ and follow the Bible way. But he needs our help. When I visited the college, I saw the poor state it was in and knew the best way I could help Congo was to rebuild and refurbish the college, help students to attend and help with the teaching so that we could send out some good godly men, men with integrity and mercy and justice to start to change their towns and villages. I really believe that that is the way to change Congo. All the aid in the world because of the corruption out there won't get where it is meant to go but by teaching men the way of Jesus Christ, we can change Congo. Through prophecies, God confirmed with me that I was to rebuild the wells that my father had dug. Two prophecies from completely different people, exactly the same, said that. 
In other words, to enable this Bible college to work again, I was to do what my father had done. My father had taught and equipped the Congolese men and women to live in the biblical way when he was in Congo, and he had seen a significant move of God. In fact, a revival. Here is an old clip, no sound, a, a film showing him and another Congolese pastor, Elia Yuma, baptizing hundreds of people in the river. In 2012, I took a team out and we upgraded the one building that was made of brick. We put in a new kitchen, organised to have a new roof put on, put in new doors and windows and had the floor of the passageway tiled and we had it rewired. In 2013, I took another team out and this time we put in a large septic tank that would last forever. The city has no main sewage and there are many open drains and poor sewage solutions. So we did this in readiness for uh, another phase of the building which was to build a brand new two-storey reinforced concrete building to provide classrooms, dormitories, bathrooms, offices, a library and a church hall. A company called CAD Architecture from Manchester, wonderful architects, kindly produced the drawings free for this phase and I had help from a structural engineer and a quantitative surveyor. In October 2014, the old main hall housed in a wooden building was pulled down and work started to build the new, the new main building. It took two years and fortunately I was able uh, to support a, an English missionary who is also the uh, structural engineer to go out and get the project going. Nick Delport did a fantastic job and saved the project really. It was a very stressful two years because so many times money dried up and time and again, God worked miracles. I could tell you some amazing miracles of provision and safety and so many other things. But in September 2016, I, along with a colleague, Pastor John Clack, had the joy of being at the opening of the new building. It was a wonderful, wonderful time. The actual building had altered somewhat from the CAD architecture plans. It had become three-storey and some rooms had moved around. The ground floor still housed the main hall for the church, which meets there. But it also had a shower block for the men and a small shower room for ladies or visitors. There's also a reception area leading to Boniface's office and he has his own entrance an ensuite toilet. On the first floor are five bedrooms, a large classroom that can be subdivided into two classrooms, an ensuite shower room for one of the bedrooms and a toilet off the landing. And there is now a third floor which has yet to be developed but which has the timber in place to create eight further rooms. We put in water tanks to catch the rainwater and one tank to collect mains water and the money has now been raised to put in a solar energy solution. Both of these 
mean that the college will be self-sufficient for water and electricity. This new college will be able to take 24 residential students. It cost £140,000 and God was faithful. And so were his people in providing this money. And I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you who have given so faithfully to this project. I've worked with Boniface to get the college registered officially as a Bible college and thus secure its future. Over the years, I have visited and got to know another missionary called Charlene. She is a gifted Bible teacher and she has agreed to help Boniface with the teaching. She's a wonderful lady and lives on a compound with other missionaries who have been so supportive. Ingrid and Gustav from Norway continue to help and support me and I am very appreciative of all they have done. Now one of the wonderful developments for the college is that the International Bible Training Institute in Sussex in England has agreed to formally link up with the college. And Eliana White, the principal of the IBTI, is planning to go out with me and develop the details of this link. Of course we're going to sponsor students, that's part of the project and £220 per annum pays for a third of their fees. We hope too that in the coming years teachers from here in England will go out on short-term missions to help with the teaching. I also hope to help Boniface in some of the needs of his church. The building works meant he lost some of his congregation and he has a need to have youth and children's works developed. A lady from the three C churches in Australia has gone out to work with Boniface and has a particular interest in women's and children's work and it's a joy to begin to get to know her and to work with her. I praise God for all that has been accomplished so far. You can find more detail of what has happened by reading the blogs and watching the vlogs on this site. But I want to ask you, would you consider helping financially? Yeah, the building's done, but there's so much more to be done. £220 would help us sponsor a student for a year. But we need more money for developing the third floor, the teaching, getting some more resources. I want to reassure you that none of the money is spent on me or any other team member going out. All the money given is banked through my church's mission account, which keeps me account accountable for every penny I spend. And every penny is spent on the actual Bukava Bible College. If you would like to help, you can either send a cheque made out to Hope Church and send it to me at 85 Greenfields Road, Shellfield, Walsall, West Midlands, WS41RT, or you can give the money via the do donate button on this website. Thank you for watching this video. Please pray for us. Please pray for Boniface. Please pray for the college. And may God richly bless you. Thank you.